Well, hello, friends. Bring you greetings on this beautiful day and praise God for the gift of this day. Oh, for our time to be together in the Word. And as we continue to journey through Jeremiah, we're, we're in the last couple days of this. And, you know, I'm excited as we're uh, completing a book. I know there's a lot of chapters that we uh, bypassed along the way, but you know what those chapters are. And I certainly encourage you on, uh, to take some time and to dig back into those on your own. But today we are going to be in the beginning of, end of chapter 41, beginning of chapter 42. And I'll give you a little uh, bit of a heads up here. Gedaliah is the individual that the Babylonian king put in charge of the, the remaining people in Judah. I mean, we had basically a lot of uh, poor people, a lot of, uh, a lot of folks that just didn't have a whole lot of importance that were left in the land. Gedaliah is, has, was uh, appointed to be the overseer. And there's a point where there is a threat on Gedaliah's life. The Ammonite king is going is threatening to kill him, or at least that's the word around. Gedaliah doesn't believe it, but Johanan, son of Kariah, and all the army officers were, who were out in the open, who were hearing these rumors, went to Gedaliah, and uh, Johanan said, uh, hey, there, there's this plot to kill you, and Gedaliah just didn't buy into it. Well, ultimately, Gedaliah is killed. It does happen. And the remnant is taken by the, it, the remnant people are taken by the Ammonites. Well, Johanan and the military officers decided, eh, enough of this, we aren't, we aren't going to put up with this. And so they captured or they took back these people that had been taken by the Ammonites and they fled with them. So I want to pick up at verse 16 of chapter 41. It says, then Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers who were with him led, all, led away all the people of Mizpah who had survived, who Johanan had recovered from Ishmael, son of Nathaniah. That is the Ammonite individual. So uh, after Ishmael uh, assassinated Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the soldiers, women, children, and court officials that he had recovered from Gibeon. And they went on stopping at Geruth Kimha near Bethlehem, on their way to Egypt to escape the Babylonians. They were afraid of them because Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, had killed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. It says, Then all of the army officers, including Johanan, son of Kariah, and Jezniah, son of Hoshiah, and all the people from the least to the greatest, approached Jeremiah the prophet and said to him, please hear our petition and prayer to the Lord your God for this entire remnant. For as you now see, though we were once many, now there are only a few left. Pray that the Lord your God will tell us where we should go and what we should do. I have heard you, replied Jeremiah the prophet. I will certainly pray to the Lord your God as you have requested. I will tell you everything that the Lord says and will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act in accordance with everything the Lord your God sends you to tell us. Whether it is favorable or unfavorable, we will obey the Lord our God to whom we are sending you so that it will go well with us for we will obey the Lord our God. We, we, we hear an interesting element here and this is, I mean, just past the, the Babylonian overtaking of Jerusalem. And we hear this remnant saying, we will obey. We will do whatever the Lord has said. We will obey. We will completely be obedient. And if we're not, then the Lord may hold it against us and basically has every right to do. So they are petitioning Jeremiah. They are recognizing him as a prophet. They've seen all of the previous prophecies come forth where the destruction of Jerusalem, the city that supposedly couldn't be taken, um, the destruction of Jerusalem happens. It is burned. Its houses are burned inside. The, you know, all of its officials are taken into Babylon. All of this has occurred, and now you have this remnant who is saying, wow, we, we are in so much trouble. All this has gone, all this calamity has occurred, and now Gedaliah has been assassinated, and we don't know what the Babylonians are going to think of that. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of issues present here, and what do they do? In the midst of all this, they don't turn inward, they don't grumble, they don't, you know, they don't give up. They turn to Jeremiah and they say, Jeremiah, we need to hear your words. We need to hear what the Lord your God is saying. We need to hear how the Lord desires to lead us. And we're going to listen to that message. 
We're going to take it up and we are going to respond. Friends, sometimes that's how a shaking works. It, it, it shakes us. It, I mean, the Lord, the Lord kind of shakes our world a little bit. And, and, you know, we come to an immediate realization how rebellious we have been and, and how we have indeed turned away. And, and there is an immediate uh, turning back. It's not easy. I'm not going to promise you that these people were perfect in any way, shape, or form. Because if they had lived one way and developed habits in that way for so long, now you're going to sit there and think that, okay, they're just going to turn and they're going to turn back wholly toward the Lord God. In, in their hearts, they want to do that, but no doubt they have practices and attitudes that have been deeply ingrained over generations of false idol and false God worship and, and living for themselves. So, you know, it, it's not that they turn on this, turn the switch and tomorrow morning, you know, they wake up and all is well and, and they've got it all together. There's, you know, there's still challenges here. But we hear them petitioning the right place. We hear them petitioning Jeremiah and saying, we need to hear the word of the Lord and we need to strive with everything in us to respond to whatever you bring us. No matter how difficult it is to hear, we need to respond. Friends, sometimes that's how it is for us in this day. It's how it's been for God's people throughout, is that we have a time in which we come to a new awareness, something that shakes our life, not, not in this way, but something that really shakes us to, to a consciousness of our sin or our rebellion or our lack of obedience or whatever you want to insert in there, there is a shaking that occurs in our lives where we kind of get shaken back to, to reality about what our relationship with God really looks like in the context of the choices we've been making. And it shakes us and it causes us to say, I'm going to choose a different path. Well, I'm going to promise you that by our own strength, we can't choose a different path. Satan will throw the trip wires. The world will entice us back into its ways, and our own flesh will betray us. Our own thinking betrays us. We need the one and only who has said, I give you my spirit. The one and only who has said, I will lead you in paths of righteousness. The one and only who went to the cross for us. Friends, we need to follow Christ our Savior, and we need his strength to live faithfully every day. Let us hear the message through Jeremiah to the people of Judah back in this day, and let us hear the message of the Holy Spirit to, to our souls, that we may walk in paths of righteousness, that we may honor and glorify God, and we may live the life for which we are intended. So let us go forth this day in the power and the strength of God, knowing that we possess the indwelling Holy Spirit. We cannot be defeated, or better yet, the spirit within us cannot be defeated. And let us always go. Let us take every step knowing the deep love of God that is toward us. So friends, go forth and know that God loves you. And so do I.